Hey there, and welcome back into the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. My name is Sam, and today I'm going to be introducing you to a very special individual. I know all of our individuals are very special, but I'm particularly excited to introduce you to today's guest because she's going to be speaking to us all about partying like a pro. Now, this is somebody who has had to do parties always. She's done parties in person. She's done parties online and she's now even morphed her parties. So she is literally doing 10 parties a week and she is booked out for the next five months. This is someone who has had to fine tune her partying and she's going to be sharing with us today some of her top secrets on how she makes parties work, but also how she got to the point where she was booked as far ahead with as many parties per week as she is currently and how she runs them all. So I know you're going to love this episode, whether you are a party planner or a network marketer, you're going to get heaps out of this. So for those of you that are not partying regularly and maybe you don't even want to, I have no doubt that this is going to inspire you and show you some new and unique ways that you might be able to connect and build those all important relationships online. So today, and with no further ado, I'm going to be introducing you to Cassie Dodds. Cassie is a senior district leader with Lorraine Lee. And many of you would have heard of Lorraine Lee. You're probably familiar with it. It has been around for decades in Australia and is still an amazing and reputable company. But today, just like all of our direct selling companies, they've had to adapt to an online world. And Cassie's going to share today what that looks like for her, where she started out and how that journey has worked worked for her in her business. The other thing you're going to learn about Cassie is she has built a top business, not once, but twice. She's going to share a little about that journey with you as well. And I think if you don't leave inspired today, (laughs) nothing's going to inspire you. So get your pen and paper ready. She's going to drop loads of golden nuggets for you guys. I know you're going to love this episode. I loved having this conversation and getting to know Cassie a little bit better. So tune on in, enjoy, and I can't wait to see you filling your calendar very soon with many, many party bookings, just like Cassie's done. So enjoy guys. Hey everybody and welcome back in to the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. My name is Sam. You know who I am, but I'm going to introduce you to this beautiful lady that is joining me today. I'd love to welcome on in Cassie Dodds. Welcome on in Cassie. Thanks Sam. It's great to be here. It's such a pleasure to have you and I'm really excited to talk to you today about partying like a pro because I know this is one of the things that many of our listeners are really challenged by is that constant want to be able to demonstrate their products well, particularly online or, you know, meet new people online, make new connections, get more events and parties, etc. But then comes in that challenge of how do I do it and how do I do it well? So, I've pulled in Cassie today because Cassie is a Lorraine Lee stylist. Did I get that right? That's right. Terminology. (laughs) She's a senior district leader with Lorraine Lee and Cassie has certainly adapted, I would say from my observations, adapted incredibly well when it comes to the world of social media, although we all have our challenges and we'll talk about that a little bit today. But Cassie, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and your journey with Lorraine Lee? Sure. So I am a mum of two. We live on the beautiful Sunshine Coast in Queensland and I've just celebrated 11 years with Lorraine Lee. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, it feels like a lifetime ago. But in a nutshell, I started my business when I was living in North Queensland and built up quite a successful business up in North Queensland. And then I got married and had a second child and we decided to relocate to the Sunshine Coast. So yep. That was probably six years ago now. And, and back then we, we had, you know, designated areas. So it meant moving away from my area meant I had to start my business again, which was right. okay. a little bit crazy, yep. a little bit scary, <laughs> but we did it. You know, we, we moved, we started from scratch again. It's been six years. I've never looked back. And now I have a really incredible business, which I'm really proud of. Now, I don't know if this was you, Cassie, but I'm going to take a stab and say it probably was. I got some beautiful sheets that I'd ordered from Lorraine Lee the other day. They rocked up and I flipped it over and on the back was a picture of 
Cassie's wedding. That was <laughs> that <me>. you? Yeah. <laughs> it was like I paid for my wedding using Lorraine Lee. And I yeah. thought, what a clever idea. But is I'm assuming that this is true, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so it was one of the very first things. We were married seven years ago now, but we kind of decided that we would get married in Hawaii. And wow. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> so that extra income, particularly from my leadership side of my business, we just mm-hmm. saved that up and used that to, yeah, have a beautiful ceremony in Hawaii and a holiday. We took the kids to Disneyland afterwards and it was all all paid for by Lorraine Lee, which is amazing. Really cool. I love yeah. it. So tell me, like, just backtracking a little bit, how did you get into Lorraine Lee or direct selling in the first place? Was this your first experience as a direct seller? Yeah, it was. It's a funny story, actually. So I happened to be traveling through Townsville on a family holiday and my cousin had just had a Lorraine Lee party. And it was funny because my mum has been buying Lorraine Lee all my life. I'd never actually been to a party, but I thought that's, you know, coincidental. And she needed one more booking to unlock her half price items. And, right. and I said, well, I can have a party, but you know, I'm in Mackay. So I imagine your girl's probably not going to come and do a party here. That girl put me on to the girl in Mackay and she came along and did my party. And I just remember we had so much fun and she had a little rack of things there. And at the time my Oscar was six months old and yep. I was thinking, what am I going to do with myself, you know, to earn a little bit of extra money. And it was just divine timing. You know, what were the odds that I happened to you know, be at my cousin's house. She needed a party. I booked a party from, you know, a thousand kilometers away and had this party. And she was talking about, you know, this sort of money that you could make. And, you know, she had this beautiful kit. And I thought, you know, what have I got to lose really? Yeah. I love it. So you jump on him, you give it a go. You got a six month old baby Mm -hmm. and you need to start things up. What was your first step? Was party the first thing that you did? You booked your own parties and and tell us a bit about that process and how it looked for you in the early days. So in back in the olden days, uh, we (laughs) need to have, I think, 10 starter parties to get started back then. Yeah. And I remember the first thing I did was I asked my mum because my mum is a Lorraine Lee super fan. Yeah, and she yeah. said, "I love you, but I don't want to have a party." <laughs> that was her was response. Like, yeah, it really was. And I was like, oh, "Are you kidding me?" And and I still tell my team this to this day. Like honestly, yeah. I, I remember feeling like, "Oh my gosh, if my mum's not going to have a party for me, mm-hmm. she's going to support my business." And yeah. I'm so glad that I didn't take that personally. She wasn't saying to me, I don't want to support you. I don't like Lorraine Lee. She was just saying, it's not my jam. So thankfully, you know, I had some other friends and family who, you know, helped me get my business started. It wasn't all, you know, rainbows and unicorns. My first starter party was terrible. I think it was like $52 in sales, no bookings. I had hives all over me. I couldn't breathe. It was like, it was just, I remember driving away thinking, it can't get worse than that, surely. Like it has to get better, right? So I didn't, it wasn't an easy process. It wasn't like it just, you know, magically was this really wonderful start to my business. I had to work for it, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, it's, it's so it's good to know that, you know, you've, like, well, I've had this conversation before where, you know, you have this horrible experience and you've got two ways to look at it. The first way you can look at it is I quit. I'm not doing this. This is horrible. I never want to do that again. But the other way to look at it is, well, can't get any worse. <laughs> it's only going to go up from here, right? Absolutely. So tell me how did your partying evolve from there? Because I'm going to take a stab and say it wasn't all like that. No, it definitely got better. I remember my leader coming over to my house to do my kid update at the time. And she was just mortified, I think, because I know my personality style is I just want to dive in and get started. And, you know, the training just went out the window and I wanted to do it sort of hands on. And she kind of reined me back in and said, okay, like, to have a successful business, you know, these are the things that are important. And so that was quite funny. We still sort of joke today about, you know, what a disgrace my kit was in the beginning because I just <laughs> I was so excited to start. So I kind of took that on board, actually yeah. went back to basics, did the training, learned that there's more to, you know, just having fun with it. There is some processes there that you really need to follow <laughs> to have a great business, funnily enough. <laughs> and I think I remember 
you know, years and years and years ago, somebody asking me, you know, what do you think that it is? And I, and I thought, number one, definitely understanding that there are processes there. But number two, I just remember I was so excited and I was just shouting it from the rooftops yep. to everybody that I knew. I was not worried about what people would think because I figured, well, they're not my jam anyway. It was like this, I want what she's having kind of attitude. And then I, it was really amazing. I all of a sudden started to you know, attract people into my business yep. that wasn't happening in the beginning. So yeah, it was a bit of, bit of both of those. Awesome. So I want to talk about your, you've got some party tips for us today. So we're going to talk about that in a moment, but before we do, I'd also like to just ask you a question from a mum, wife, personal perspective, you know, doing parties, particularly when you're doing them in home, I know times have changed a little bit now and we'll cover off on that, but when you're doing parties in home, it can take up a lot of your personal time. So how did you balance? Because you've grown an incredible business. How did you balance growing that business, partying, but also managing life at the same time? What's What's been the secret tool for you with that? Well, there is no secret and I don't always get it right. And I yeah. definitely feel like I have improved over mm-hmm. the years. I can absolutely say you know, rewind six years ago and there was no balance in my life and people that love me kept saying it to me, but I probably didn't want to hear it back then. Now though, I do really feel like I have a beautiful balance in my business. My business is a hundred percent online these days. So I think, you know, particularly in the early days when my babies were babies. My Mm in-home party business was so beautiful for me and nights and weekends were ideal. And now they're at school and I want to spend nights and weekends with them. So I have definitely adapted more to an online business model for that flexibility, but it does come with its set of challenges. You know, home is work now and I have to walk past my office to go to my bedroom. And it's the first thing I walk into, you know, when I wake up in the morning, but I think there's a couple of things. Number one, actually just being really diligent with that time and I'm very much now Monday to Friday in the office ask for help my I you know I really call on and help as much as possible and I never used to be great at that so I get my mum to get the kids two days a week from school so I'm fortunate that I've got that help Mm -hmm. Um, and as my business has continued to scale and grow I've I've outsourced as much as I can with you know a little VA and whatnot as well so that would not have been possible to I think you know balance it all at at the level that you know I'm running as well so yeah yeah awesome now you've mentioned a couple of times that you have transitioned into an online partying scenario so can you tell us a little bit about that sure so I'm guessing like most people it was not so much a choice but more thrown into it as COVID hit and Interestingly enough, the online space is something that I had always sort of dabbled in, but it was almost almost frowned upon in a sense. And I think that's something that, you know, I don't know if it was just within it. Well, I know it wasn't just within our company, but I know there was a lot of beliefs of that online potentially would ruin our, you know, in-home party business. And so when COVID hit, it was almost like the handbrake was off and it was like, all right, let me show you what's possible here. And honestly exploded there was you know maybe a month or two there where we were thinking you know we are done for here and then it was lots of quick thinking and you know jumping into action and not hesitating and it completely you know skyrocketed my business things changed severely after switching to an online model all of a sudden I had a team all over Australia I had hosts and customers all over Australia yep And, and personally my sales you know more than doubled. It was, it was phenomenal what we found was actually possible. So tell me a little bit about how you run a party online now, because I know there's lots of different methods, lots of different ways. Everyone seems to have their different little idiosyncrasies, I suppose, and, and different companies, also different individuals within different companies. And I know it's a bit of a flavor thing, like it it does depend a bit on your personality, but can you tell us a little bit about how that works for you and how you've adapted it to work as well for your team? So I know that you've got some very specific ways that you teach those that you work with as well. Definitely. So I I say to everybody, do what feels right and authentic for you and what you can manage, because at the end of the day, it is you that has to maintain and manage it. So don't more yep. do more than you're comfortable with. Um, for me, I run my online parties through Facebook groups. 
Yep. And I use a scheduling website called Cintshare and mm-hmm. not everybody in my team uses Cintshare. Some people do use, do everything manually. For me, purely based on the volume of parties that I have, yep. that is just a game changer and a lifesaver for me. And it helps me to be really consistent in my business. So I'm yep. not you know, I feel like my time now is spent engaging with my hosts and my customers and doing all the beautiful 1% of things that make a difference, not thinking about, did I post this morning, you know, and often, you know, my first post in the morning happens at 6.30 a.m. and my alarm doesn't go off till 7 a.m. So it's just really helped me to, yeah, have a life outside of my parties and Mm -hmm. to focus on what I believe is really important, which is the connecting with those customers and the behind the scenes stuff which is where, you know, those bookings really come from as well. Awesome. So when you run your parties, you, I know that there's, you know, this, this sort of toss up between people doing live demonstrations versus doing posts. How do you formulate those group parties? What have you found works best for you and your customers? I've tried a bit of everything and I feel like now I've found that sweet spot for me, I was doing lives into every party, but again, just purely based on the volume. I think if I was doing one or two parties a week, I would absolutely make that a priority. Yep. Because I know it works and I know you get to connect beautifully one-on-one with your customers. But because I'm doing 10 parties a week, it's just not you know, as manageable to be in 10 places as yep. at one time. So in lieu of that, some of the feedback that I found was, you know, when I was going live was that, you know, people missed it or they weren't actually on there or I was just kind of talking to myself. So I have got a heap of pre-recorded videos on all of our product. And, you know, if you're familiar with Lorraine Lee, it is pillows and sheets and towels and they're really tangible items. Mm -hmm. So if my customers can't physically feel them because I'm not in front of them, the next best thing is actually, you know, seeing some kind of demonstration with those products. So I have lots of my core products, you know, pre-recorded and they're in my posts more than static image posts. I have quite a lot of video content there so that they can actually, you know, hear those things and hear my voice and and hear what I'm passionate about in our yeah. range as well. Now, interestingly, this is what you just mentioned that you do 10 parties a week and that's massive. That's congratulations. That's absolutely awesome. And I know where so many of our listeners would be like, I wish I was doing that many. First question is how do you get to that point? So I, I know this is a long journey and it's not as simple as just answering that question, but you know, if someone's thinking, how do we even begin to get there? What would be some of the first steps you give people to say, hey, this is how you improve and increase your bookings? So number one, I think, again, know your strengths and weaknesses in your personality. And my weakness in my personality is organization, without a doubt. It does not come naturally. I feel like it's far more natural for me now, but I was flying by the seat of my pants for a long time. Yep. And now I'm I'm far more structured and organized. So every week looks the same for me now. And so when I'm working with a new stylist, I ask them to pick their party days and be in control of their diary rather than having, you know, their hosts and customers dictating where they're working. Again, yep. you're the one that has to sort of maintain it. So for me, what that looks like is I start my parties on Wednesdays and Thursdays every week. And I've sort of been a bit strategic around putting that around, you know, paydays as well. So I kind of run over two payday cycles and I run five parties on a Wednesday, five party on a Thursday, and they sort of run simultaneously together. And that, I guess, means that I can batch the work that I'm doing. If I'm doing it with one host, I'm doing it with five hosts and, you know, personalizing, but I get to do the same things five times in a row. So I'd say to start with, it's a matter of just building it up. It might be starting with two parties on the same day. And then my little golden rule is focus on two bookings from every party within the next two weeks and aim to book those new bookings in nice and close, get your two a week, then move to the next week and then fill those two spots and then move to the next week. And try not to think too far in advance, you know, let people know when you book them in, this is my next available spot. Like like a hairdresser would, they don't sort of open up their calendar and say, when would you like to come in? They tell you when they're available. So that's generally sort of how I I built it up. I just started with one day per week and I got that to the number of parties that I wanted to be doing per week and and had a bit of consistency with that and made sure that felt okay for me. And then I added in the extras. But 
I guess in regards to the bookings, it's it's absolutely being bookings focused and mindset I think is so huge and yep. having a goal, you know, yep. my, my absolute non-negotiable is to make sure that every single one of my hosts receives at least one half price item. And at Lorraine Lee, that means they need two bookings. So yep. that's what I will go hell, you know, hell for leather on to make sure that she's winning first. And that then means that I get to win as well. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. That's a really great way to think about it. Get them to win first. And then that also comes back to help you at the same time. Totally. So you mentioned as well that you've sort of transitioned from doing lives because you've got so many parties now into doing some pre-recorded stuff and do posts, mm-hmm. but you know, as far as those that are not at that point yet, what's your opinion on doing lives when you've got the capacity to do them? Do it a thousand percent. I absolutely, like I said, if it was possible for me to well, I shouldn't say if it was possible because it's possible. If it was yeah. important enough to me, I would find the time and I've kind of found a way around that. But And that's, again, that balance and, you know, what can I do versus, you know, what do I need to do? If you have got the capacity to do it, you're crazy not to. You know, As we know, Facebook pushes that out way more than a video that you've loaded up one time. And it gives you that opportunity to really connect with those customers, ask mm. those customers what they want to see, show your host's favorite items. If you, yeah, if you can do it, I would say be brave. And, and, you know, so many people say they're waiting to get confident to do lives. And to that, I say, just be courageous and do yeah. enough and yep. you, you will eventually, you know, feel more confident in doing yep. it. Yeah, absolutely. And it is one of those things that it comes with practice, but I completely agree with you. And I'm glad to hear you say that because I think, you know, there, there is like, we've moved away from the ability of being able to be in home. And, and it's not to say that it's going to be that way long-term. We are getting to a stage where we're going to be able to start that process again, but you sort of go from having that relationship and connection to going completely the other to the other side, which is where it's so disconnected. And a live allows you to still have a little bit of that connection and be a little bit you, which is really, really powerful. So yeah, like you said, I, I really agree with that. Just have the courage, get up and have a go because it gets easier the more that you do it. So can you give us your three top tips now to partying like a pro for those that are thinking, I really need to improve on this skill or I'd love any piece of knowledge you can give me, please, Cassie. <laughs> I would say number one, definitely get organized. And whether that's, you know, having certain days or, you know, having a structure or a script or something that's going to help you to be able to do this consistently, because there is no point posting like a crazy person on one day and then, you know, ghosting it for three days. You've got to be consistent in it. So have a plan, you know, have some sort of structure and plan. I believe that's really important. Second thing is know that, like a in-home party, online party really is all about connecting with your people and not assuming that you know what they're going to do and actually being able to have those conversations with those customers. And I think that can sometimes be a struggle in the online world because you're not face-to-face with them. So find a way to connect one-on-one with those guests and let them know what options are available to them and knowing that that is probably... I can tell you hand on heart, that's where 80% of my bookings come from. They don't come from people saying in a party, I'll have a party. It's from the conversations where I'm offering those guests the opportunity to get their linen at a a better price. And the third tip, check your mindset, check what your belief in, you know, your company that you work for, the products that you sell, even right down to, you know, I remember in the very beginning, I was really nervous to you know, we have this woolen underlay in our range and it's $399. And I remember thinking nobody in their right mind is going to spend $400 on this woolen underlay. And I just wouldn't show it. I was so scared because I didn't believe that it was worth $400. And it wasn't until, you know, a couple of months into my journey, this beautiful little old lady came up to me and said, I need to replace my woolen underlay. It's been the best money I've ever spent. And that gave me the belief that, you know, people do see the value in this. So check in on the belief in the product that you're offering Mm. and checking on on your belief around bookings and who that's about as well. And remember that it has to be about them first and foremost. That customer has to win before the host can win, before you can win. You can't win if they don't win first. Yeah. I love that. That's really powerful. Mindset is 
such an important part of this journey. So I love that that's one of your top tips. That's awesome. Now, I know it's really easy sometimes for us to focus on our successes and the successes of those around us. But I really do believe that our greatest learning experiences often come from our failures. So have you had any bumps along the way that for you have been great learning experiences? So many bumps. Oh <laughs> Let's open that can of worms. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I feel like, you know, from starting my business from scratch again, you know, that's a really difficult place to come from having a, a one and a half million dollar business to a zero dollar business. Yeah. Almost, you know, overnight and having to build that confidence and courage up to, you know, start again I wouldn't change it for the world it taught me so much made me go back to basics on customer service you know the online party I feel like I'm still finding my way through I feel like I have a really nice routine now but that's not without challenges you know every other week Facebook's changing the game on something and you know it's like you just get your head around it and it and it changes again so I feel like it's about just constantly learning and being solution focused, not Mm -hmm. problem focused. Otherwise, I would have been in the fetal position and out the back door, you know, years ago if I was problem focused. But every little thing, I kind of see it as a challenge. It's like, okay, well, how can how can I make this better? You know, it is what it is. And yeah, so that would probably be my advice with any of that recruiting booking selling you know solution focused what can you do about it because nobody's going to come and save you what can you do differently to get a better result yeah awesome and now you sort of touched on social media a little bit we've talked about social media from a partying perspective it's obviously a really big part of your business how do you use it outside of partying to really capitalize on the potential that it has for your business Cassie So I feel like this is a funny one because I think sometimes this can be overwhelming if you think Mm -hmm. of all the things. So I feel fortunate that ours was gradual. You know, when I started, it was like there was just a business page. And so that's what I started with. And then, you know, Instagram came along and then we were doing VIP groups. So I think for a new person, I would, my advice probably would be don't bite off more than you can chew. Mm -hmm. You know, start with one and do it consistently and then build those networks if you like. But I have established a really nice presence in those places. But like I said, it happened gradually for me. I, I didn't try and do it all in one hit. Yeah. And there's different markets of people in those three different spaces as well. So I think just showing up authentically and it, that's not, you know, just bombing them with sales or bombing them with your company, you know, images or whatnot, but yeah. That's where if I'm going to go live, it'll be on my business page or in my VIP group or over on my Instagram. And that's where, yeah, just I find I attract a new market of people over in those spaces as well. Yeah, awesome. Now, I know that one of the things that I feel like it's overlooked an awful lot, and yet it seems to me to be the most obvious. I know when I was running parties was training that host. So do you have any, you know, how do you feel about that, first of all? And do you have any tips for, I guess, making that host your secret weapon when it comes to running a successful party? A thousand percent. In the beginning, when we started doing online, it was really funny because I remember thinking, you know, all these things that we thought about how to run a successful, um, you know, in-home party, they just don't even matter in the online space. And boy, was I wrong. (laughs) I feel like maybe we were just cruising along with adrenaline. I don't know. But now I absolutely hand on heart believe if your host doesn't fully understand, number one, how those host rewards work. And number two, what she needs to do, what her role in that is, that party's going nowhere real fast. And, you know, I don't know about you, Sam, but I have had multiple direct sales parties, you know, over the years. And when that consultant, stylist, distributor tells you how the rewards work, it's like they're speaking another language, you know, and they just- (laughs) They're (laughs) also different, aren't they? And you assume that because you know it, you understand it, that everyone else will. Yeah. And often, you know, my stylist will say, oh, she's a XYZ consultant. She totally gets it. I'm like, no, she doesn't because hers is different again. So you really, I think it's so important to spell it out and break it down and give them a goal to work toward and then give them their role to play in that. So I'm very big on finding out what their wish list is, you know, and I'll ask questions like, if you could have any two items in the range, half price, 
what would they be rather than you know what do you want from your party because that's just so open broad, yeah. and broad and I will actually go through and crunch the numbers with them and I will share with them what a difference it makes if they have a you know thousand dollar party with two bookings um, versus if they have no bookings how much they'd actually need in sales yeah to save the same amount and and often it's like they need to have a six and a half thousand dollar party or a thousand dollar party with two bookings and that yeah. makes them feel so much more achievable so yep. absolutely make sure that they know what the goals are don't give up on it I find when I ask my host I don't get an answer straight away from most yep. of them but I will continue to follow up on it because I know unless they've got a goal like any of us in life you know it's like shooting for a target with a blindfold on yeah so good so I love that and that's really powerful and you mentioned that then there's responsibility on them so you give them some tasks to take care of what are some of the key tasks that you give your host that you feel number one help you with running things but actually help you get that result that you want in the end so I think it's really important to explain to them I say to all of my hosts having an online party you know it is easy you don't have to cook you don't have to clean you don't even have to wear a bra if you don't want to <laughs> I love it sold <laughs> Exactly. But it's no different to having an in-home party in the sense that if you invite your friends over and then you hide in the kitchen the entire time, it's going to make for a really awkward party. So, I love the analogy. That's great. Yeah, you know, don't go hide in there. Come in, you know, say hello to your friends. Yeah. Show them what, you know, pieces you've got at home. Point out what your favorite items are. And I just give them really simple jobs to do. And I think it's super important to not set that host up to fail. I think sometimes mm -hmm. we come from a place of desperation and we tell them it's so easy. You don't have to do anything. That's not yeah. true. You know, that is not true. And then we get mad at them when they don't engage on their parties. So yeah, yep. let them know it is easy and I'm going to give you some really great tips and it's, they're not hard, but there's a few jobs that you need to do. And you're, you know, yeah. you're like a woman in this party. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. Do you know, I think I said to you when we were chatting about this podcast episode, I told you about how we attended, Greg and I attended all of these parties last year. And most of our listeners know this story. We, we went to 60 parties in 30 days. Greg thinks that it's probably more than that it's probably more like 70 maybe even 80 and since then I reckon I've done another 10 or 20 so I reckon we're coming on close to 100 parties in the last 12 months oh. of those I would have been a host of probably a dozen I'm gonna say and the last one I did was just a week ago with Lorraine Lee ironically Love but that. the the interesting thing about that was I got to see so many different versions of the way that people operate with their parties and we did this to build the virtual party training that we, we built at the beginning of COVID to help people get online. But what I thought was really fascinating was how many people didn't take that opportunity you've just mentioned of telling me how I could help them. And the thing was that there were a number of instances where I got to the end of this party where I'd been told I had to do nothing. And I literally was left to do nothing as the host. And I got to the end and they said, oh, great, you've got $150 to spend on product. And I was like, if I knew that by just doing a few extra things, I might've been able to get money to spend on product. I would have been all in, you know, asking my friends, have you put an order in, maybe inviting another person in, but they didn't educate me and tell me. And so it's affected me, but it's also affected them as the consultant. And it was simply a fear that they didn't want to ask me to do anything because they were worried that I would then, you know, whether or not I'd back out. I don't, I don't know what the fear is. I'm not quite sure, but there's this fear of, I don't want to ask them to do anything because we've been trained to say, you don't have to do anything. Yeah. So I, I thought that was, that's a really powerful thing there is just utilizing them because they've got that connection, right? With their, with their customers that are coming in or your customers now, but their friends that they're inviting in. And you know what? You can't make them do anything. All you can do is share with them some really great tips on how to have a successful party. And then there's yeah. this balancing act of they're either going to do it or they're not, but I know I'm going to continue doing my job regardless because yeah. it's still yeah. my business at the end of the day. So they are, they're so much more on board when they understand financially what's in it for them. Yeah, I love it. So Cassie, just before we get into our fun questions here, I want to ask you a little bit about that organization because you're like me in that, you know, I'm, I fly by the seat of my pants. I've said before, Greg calls me Taz devil. I like move a million miles an hour and I've always got this wake of craziness going behind me. And, um, but I, I also love to get things done. And so I have to put things into play to keep organized. 
So how do you keep yourself organized? What tools or what do you use? What do you do to make sure you don't miss anything important that you're scheduled and organized, that you know what's going on? What are your, I guess, secret weapons that you use to keep yourself on track each week? So I used to be a very manual person and I would, you know, write lists and, mm-hmm. you know, and it's funny when I look around my office right now, I've got sticky notes everywhere. I, I still <laughs> yeah, in a love, you know, love a few little manual things, but I'm now anything that can be automated, I've, I've automated. So yeah. for me, a daily, a day in the life of, I swear by my Trello board, something I'm so passionate about. It's all automated. It does its thing. It blinks at me when I haven't, you know, finished a task. So all of my parties sit on that board. I know exactly where I'm at with every single host. There's little checklists and it's just like having a piece of paper, but it's digital. So yep. I've, got a, I've got something. And I kind of thought, why reinvent the wheel? People have created these really amazing, you know, apps and whatnot for exactly that. So I've just kind of really tapped into what's available out there Mm -hmm. already. Trello, I swear by that. It took me a long time to really wrap my head around that. And the first couple of times I saw it, I thought, I don't know about this, but now I'm addicted. I use it for everything. Yep. Yeah, I, I use that religiously as well. And I've actually just started using another little um, customer service app called Sell with Amy, um, A-M-I, and yep. it has been phenomenal as well. I feel like I've got a little personal assistant in my pocket and there's been, again, quite a lot of work to kind of yep. get that set up initially. But between, you know, these little systems, it just is like a really well-oiled machine now and it all yeah, um, beautifully. It. Yeah. Awesome. And it's good. You know, I guess the thing is for everyone, it's different and it needs to be something that works for you, but having, there are so many tools out there. And as you just rattled off a number of them and, you know, we use something very similar Trello called Asana, which, you know, again, it's, it's that whole, it's like a pinup board on your computer, but it talks to your phone or any other device you have, and you can keep things organized. And there's so many different things out there that you can use to help you with this stuff, but there's no point sort of sitting there and making life difficult for yourself when you could automate some things. But automation, like you've said, Cassie, doesn't mean disconnecting. And that's the really important thing there as well is where you can still build that relationship, still do private reach out, still connect with people. Now, I do want to get to these fun questions. I am curious to know though, what's your favorite way of doing reach outs? How do you go about doing that? What tool do you use to do your reach outs to build those personal relationships, whether it be with your host or your customers that are coming to the parties? Yeah, so they have never been my strong suit. And, you know, I I guess I'm in a position right now where, you know, I'm booked five months in advance. So I'm I'm not having to go out and, you know, do my reach outs for my for my outside of my parties. Mm -hmm. But I think that's because I do my reach outs within my parties. I don't wait for, you know, it to kind of all go down the gurgler before I go looking for parties. I know Mm -hmm. that best parties are booked from parties. So I I do use Facebook Messenger for most of it because my online parties are obviously held on Facebook. So it's within that same platform. Mm -hmm. So I just have a really good routine now of going through and making sure that, you know, I introduce myself to every guest that's been invited into the party, let them know, you know, what offers we've got going on right now. Let them know that I'm here to help them if they have any questions. And then I always follow up with every single guest at the end of an event as well. Awesome. And, and that is where the majority of the sales, the bookings, the recruits come from. And I will just approach it in a way. And just the way I start my messages, if you're anything like me, you probably saw the last message and completely forgot about it because that's, you know, we are women. That's what we do. Yeah. We see it and we think, oh, that's important. I need to get to that. And then you just forget it. And my customers are so beautiful. They are, they'll say, oh, that's exactly what happened. You know, thank you so much for following up. They're so grateful. And I was really nervous about doing these reach outs and these follow-ups because I don't want to be a spammy pammy. You know, I don't want to be that guy that's just blasting everybody that's not yeah. interested. In. I was really nervous about this initially. And it's so funny. Nobody's told me to jump off a cliff yet. Nobody's <laughs> told me to, you know, go and you haven't whatever. exploded. Yep. <laughs> Nothing has happened. In fact, mostly, well, or the whole time they say, you know, thank you so much for the reminder. You know, this is what I need. La la la. Or they'll say, I've been so busy. And then there's another opportunity and it's, yeah. you know, I can say, you know, that's okay. Let's book you in for your own event instead. Like, yep. and that turns into a booking opportunity as well. So yep. 
most of it's done through messenger and now I've got myself into a really good habit because I haven't been so great at my customer service. I actually don't know how I've got the business that I have today because I've never really <laughs> done follow up, but now I'm in a really great habit with the the new app that I'm using to follow up with people two days, two weeks and two months yep. after they've purchased. And that is making a phenomenal difference Love to it. my as well. So good. All right, so we're going to jump into those fun questions. So first one, of course, is what's your favourite book for us to add to our Accelerator book list? So I was saying before, I'm not a reader. I wish I was. I'm definitely more of an audio book kind of gal. But I really, really love Winging It um, by Emma Isaacs. Okay. Um, So she is the founder of Business Chicks in Australia, and her book is it's just fantastic. She's a mum of, you know, five children. She runs this incredible business and she talks about not having to do it all. You know, you can do it all, but not at the same time. And so it's a really good, you know, business slash mum slash, you know, just, just jumping in and giving things a go. Love it. Awesome. All right. So winging it. Now you've mentioned audio books. Have you got any favorite audio books you can add to the list? It has been a little while since I listened to an audio book. So I, I feel like I'm one of those people that buys the hard copy and then doesn't read. I like the look of a hard copy yeah. and then I don't read it and I, I download it. I'm going to admit I'm a bit the same and I often will buy the hard copy and then listen to the audio book anyway. And it's like, I've, I love having a beautiful bookshelf of all these yes. great books and you should see it it's a big bookshelf but Mm -hmm. at the end of the day I find I've got more time if I'm sitting in the car or (laughs) out on a run to listen to the books okay so if you could have any superpower what would it be and why I reckon I would stop the clock I feel like I feel like time is the most valuable commodity absolutely you are speaking my language right now (laughs) yeah stop the clock you know and just get those special moments with the kids and you know Get a little bit more done in the day. You know, I, I feel like if I could do anything, I would I would stop the clock. Love it. And what is your favourite quote? Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're absolutely right. Perfect. I love that one. Also one of my favourites. Awesome. It's like I've coached you. We've... <laughs> <laughs> you're throwing in all my favourites here. I love it. So good. It. So if you could go back in time and say one thing to your past self, Cassie, what would you say? I feel like I would just say, be kind to yourself. Yeah. I know that I am my own worst critic and my, my best cheerleader as well. I feel like I do both well, but I just, I feel like that's something that everybody could, you know, really hear is just be kind to yourself. Beating yourself up is not going to, it's not going to help. Yeah. So awesome. Well, this has actually been fantastic. I've loved having this chat with you today and and getting to know you and a little bit more about your journey. So thank you so much for sharing your amazing wealth of knowledge with our listeners. I think we're going to have a whole lot of people re-inspired to get out there and start partying and doing things maybe a little bit differently, which I think there's so many bad habits that are formed in this social media um, whirlwind that we've all gone into. I feel like people have moved into some into some habits that that are disconnecting them. And so I really love that you've been able to share some of that knowledge about how to bring the connection in while still doing things in a digital sense, which is so great. So thank you. Really appreciate you, Cassie, and coming in here. You're so welcome. Now, what we will do as well is we'll pop in the show notes, guys, as some of that information that Cassie has shared with us, favorite book. And of course, if you do want to reach out to Cassie, we'll pop your Facebook business page in there so they can touch base with you. But I know you're flat out busy. I can hear it must be your your Trello in the background (laughs) reminding you that you've got things to do. So (laughs) I'm going to release you, catch and release you to go back to running your amazing business. But again, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. And, you know, you've being generous enough to share all that knowledge with us. So thanks again, Cassie. Thanks, Sam. My pleasure. Awesome. So thanks everyone for tuning on in again this week. I really do hope that this has inspired you to get out there and book some more parties. Maybe you're a network marketer and this is more for you about a demonstration or an event or just reaching out and having those personal conversations and relationships with people as well. I think there's, you know, something for everyone to get out of this and I'm sure you've all taken loads of notes. So thanks for tuning on in guys and we look forward to seeing you again next week, but bye for now.